future is working from home. So what I want to do is show you my pretty cool work from home setup, give you a little tour, let you know what I've been up to recently. Uh, so let's go. So typically I start my day with a nice cup of coffee. Um, however, I've already had three today, so we're just going to cool it on the coffee and head straight to the workspace. The commute, as you can see, I know it's really strenuous. So come on in, guys. Here it is. The glorious office setup where I spend the majority of my day time. Uh, so you've got the nice little workout stuff in case you need a little break. Um, nostalgic Star Wars posters in case you need a little throwback. Some amazing paintings that I hung myself, you can tell are super straight. Definitely, definitely super straight. Um, and here's my setup. Uh, it's super cozy. I also like to hang out in my rabbit slippers all day. Um, you know, I just like to hang out at my desk, probably chatting to you all at some point, reading some great books, uh, lighting a candle from a local shop to find merchant. This is the behind the scenes. I know, it's really exciting, super cool stuff. Um, anyway, that's it for me here in Ottawa. Hope you guys enjoy Town Hall today. I hope to see you at future Town Halls. Hope to see you in Ottawa again soon as well. And until then, cheers guys. Everyone needs a little work from home buddy. Here's mine. Yeah, there he is. He doesn't like me. Oh no, maybe he does. Hey friends. Wow, there are some great office setups. Um, welcome to our first town hall. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, maybe middle of the night. Um, my name is Jean-Michel, I'm the CTO here at Shopify and I'm extremely um, excited to host our first ever partners uh, town hall. Uh, now we have 900 people signed up, um, which is amazing. And um, also I think, you know, everyone here who's listening, we're also extremely privileged. Um, you know, we've, uh, We've grown up in the internet age and we're now in a situation worldwide where um, we're using some of our superpowers on the internet uh, to impact a lot of businesses lives right now um, it's a great responsibility and i want to thank everyone who's tuning in because i know everyone um, in our ecosystem played a huge role um, in making that happen and also thank you to uh two special guests today we have uh kelly and mark who you'll hear from uh pretty soon as well now, uh, as you'll notice, did this town hall uh, is a bit raw. Now, at Shopify, we try and you know have a really good, uh, really good videos, high quality. Um, because of everything that's going on, this is a bit. This is going to be a bit more raw. Uh, it, it was hard to choreograph everything, so bear with us. Now, for those who watched the uh, One World Together uh, concert over the weekend, that's a bit of the vibe you're going to get. Um, Charlie Puth, who was playing piano in his bedroom with his bed not made. Uh, you're going to see a bit of that. Uh, you might see a bit of Elton John with his piano in the backyard, which I have no idea who actually brought his piano in the backyard, but we'll, we might have a bit of that as well. So again, forgive us for not having a super uh, choreographed event here. And um, let me talk a bit about what Town Hall is in the first place and why do we call this Town Hall. Now, uh, Town Hall is something we do within Shopify um, every Friday. Uh, it's been a routine we've we've done, I think, for 15 years. and. Uh, the, the goal of Town Hall is to really bring people together, um, you know, stop things for a bit, you know, stop all the busy work and um, get together and show off a bit of, you know, give an update of what things are going on. Um, but as importantly around Town Hall is actually to get a really good vibe of the company. Um, we do AMAs uh, consistently um, and it's really just a, a good way of get, getting a vibe going as opposed to just, you know, presenting to everyone and telling them like, uh, I think having a Q&A session helps us do that. And I think that's that's what our goal is uh, today with all of you is let's get a vibe of the partners. Um, there's there's probably thousands of shop fires watching us right now. Also really curious to hear, uh, you know, what's going on in everyone's mind, what it's like to be a partner um, supporting our merchants. So uh, with that, uh, there's a Slido link that was sent out. Um, I, I'm sure in emails, et cetera. Um, Please go vote, vote for questions right now. I think voting is still open um, and you can go and, and ask questions as the presentation is going as well. So um, if anything, uh, unfortunately the world created a new world, word for us, social distancing. Um, I think it's the wrong, world wrong word, sorry, 
Uh, Because actually what we're doing is we're getting closer socially. We're just physically distancing ourselves. So hopefully that's the vibe I want to have with all of us today is um, let's get socially closer. Uh, We might not be able to be physically together right now, but we'll we'll figure it out. Um, So let me just dive into a a couple of quick updates about Shopify just to get, you know, uh, the electrons moving in our brains and get excited about actually what's uh, what's happening. Um, Like. Uh, like most of you, we had to take a you know pretty serious look at the roadmap of Shopify, and have a you know get an idea. Are we are we working on the things that matter for merchants right now? And uh, you know during those those conversations we've had um, within Shopify, you know there's a bit of silver lining, which is uh, Shopify and you know our 25,000 partners. We've essentially been building this this thing together for the last 15 years, which is to help businesses get online. So, you know, once we looked at all of our roadmaps, we realized that, you know, a bulk of it was very applicable to what what merchants needed right now. Um, it's not like we had to pivot the company, but we did have to make some, you know, some short term trade offs of things that we, we felt are going to have a biggest impact. And if you haven't been following our blogs, here's a quick list of things that have that have launched recently, you know, in, I guess, our reaction to to get things in the merchant's hand as quickly as possible and and hopefully have, you know, have a couple of you know uh, you know success stories for merchants who uh, are struggling in this new environment. Um, so things that maybe you know aren't as obvious as to folks, um, you know, local pickup and delivery launch. We'd actually been working on this for a while, um, you know. So uh, stores can have uh, pickup and store options on checkout. There's a nice there's a new uh, checkout experience that makes it uh, really easy to pick um, different delivery options. So that's out in everyone's hands right now. Um, you've probably heard about the Shopify app challenge where we're, um, engaged with our, with all of you to build some great apps. Um, as you're seeing merchants in need, um, there, there's probably a lot of things we don't see that you're seeing. Um, we'd love for your creative juices to kind of, uh, go on overdrive and think of some great apps. Um, I think we're giving away a hundred thousand dollars for the finalists, um, and some app credits for the app store, which is great. Uh, if you haven't tried it out, there's a, a new compass app. Uh, that we launched recently as well. And this is all very topical about what's happening today, which is helping um, partners and Shopify train merchants. You know, I, th- I think I actually looked at some of the questions. A lot of a lot of you are, um, you know, hand-to-hand combat with merchants getting started, maybe not all the technical skills. They have to learn about marketing, Instagram, social, setting up inventory. Um, and w- what we try to do with Compass is have an actual uh, property where people can get help. And it's it's easy to find. Um, things. Now we're going to be opening up 10 partner driven uh, training and tutorial sessions in Compass so that uh, partners have an opportunity to, um, you know, basically talk directly to our merchants. Um, You know, we realize that you have uh, as much, if not often, sometimes more hand-to-hand experience than we do working with merchants. And um, we're going to give you uh, an opportunity through Compass to have tutorials and training. So, uh, uh, in our newsletter, uh, I'll have a sign-up link at the end. We'll be sending out more information about how, how to get spots. And maybe I'll just end with, uh, I, I was a pretty big advocate at Unite last year about uh, our launch of API versioning. And uh, I don't know if serendipitously, this month was also <laughs> the, the the first year anniversary of API versioning in which we were uh, deprecating the uh, two, 2019 April version. Uh, now we had great progress, and uh, we've loved all the feedback you've given us about the the, the new API uh, metrics dashboard that's in the partners area. Uh, we've noticed a lot of people have have uh, gotten off some of the deprecated APIs, adopted some of the faster pay- pagination APIs, um, but we're also going <laughs> to realize that we're in pretty un- unusual circumstances, and we've put postponed the the actual deprecation of the 2019 April. Addition to give a, you know give you time to um, I, I'd rather you spend time on merchants and on on building new apps than, than maybe getting off this version. But um, uh, we we do want to deprecate it because there's some really important performance improvements in the new ones. But uh, we'll give you a bit of reprieve. I don't I don't know exactly uh, when we're gonna, we're going to deprecate it, but TBD on that. And uh, there's some there's some really cool things coming out really soon. Um, we've integrated tipping into the online store experience that's shipping next week. Uh, we have themes for grocery and restaurants for merchants that are shipping next week. I think next week. Ooh, sorry, I'm not sure. Maybe the week after. Uh, it's coming. I saw mock-ups. They look, they look amazing uh, to help restaurants and grocery stores um, uh, out as well. Um, our, new, our new retail POS is coming out. Now, you might be wondering, why ship a POS <laughs> when brick-and-mortar stores are closed? But 
I think the reality is, is a lot of the stores are closed, but they do pick up in store. So we've integrated our buy online pick up in store flows into the uh, retail POS as well. Um, and it's also a good chance for those who have brick and mortar stores to maybe get ready for when things will, yeah, they will go back to normal and people will be probably wanting to vote with their dollars and come in and support you. So it, it might be a good time to adopt as well. And um, we've rolled out a, a beta of the new plus product. So the multi-store administration uh, to merchants last week. So some people are getting it um, over the next couple of weeks, months or so, I think um, we'll be pushing out to everyone. So definitely some really good velocity internally. Um, and uh, I'll say there's a couple of surprises that I'm not going to say today that are coming out in the next couple of weeks that are really exciting. Uh, I'll let I'll let the teams promote those when they're when they come out. So, um, so those are kind of some pivots we've made around COVID. Let me talk about some things that we've actually uh, you've all you all know about. You're probably wondering what's going on, and I have a couple of kind of updates I'd love to share. Um, the first one is the experts marketplace, which I know is a great source of leads for all of partners. Um, the expert marketplace used to be behind a login prompt, like someone had to have signed up to Shopify and have a store. Um, we've removed that. So right now, what we want to do is make it as easy and frictionless as possible for merchants to find partners and connect and get help. So uh, merchants now who don't have a shop yet, haven't signed up, um, we're going to let them actually browse um, and, and possibly connect with, uh, with partners out there. So I think that's, that's going to be great for, for partners, uh, especially when there's so many uh, you know, people you know, with not a lot of skill in e-commerce really needing some help right now. Wow. Okay. Our favorite online store editor. Now I think there's probably 123 questions <laughs> that were posed about this. So I'm sure I'll talk about it later, but just, you know, quick update. Um, it's moving along. We're getting a lot of feedback. This is again, one of the biggest changes we've made to the online stores, bringing sections everywhere. We want to make sure it's done well. Um, GA is still TBD. Um, I know we've got a lot of good feedback, so I guess stay tuned. Um, I'll answer some questions a bit later with more details, but um, it's it, it, it's still moving. We're excited about it. Um, it's just we're kind of really picky. Like I, I think the bar is really high about what we do here, and we want to make sure it lives up to your expectations. Um, international. Uh, I know there's a lot of international partners uh, tuned in now, which is great. Bonjour, hello. Um, we've uh, we've been a bit quiet about what we're doing about international, but I think <laughs> I, I talked to the team recently. I think we should be a bit louder. I mean, we've. We've, we've shipped with a default of 133 supported uh, currencies now for multi-currency, um, for uh, being able to translate online stores and a geolocation app for themes as well. For, so for those who want to sell cross-border, like we're ready. Um, we've got a V1 of all this out and we think this is going to make it a lot easier for merchants outside of the core markets to, to, to have a great export business um, as well. And, and um, as well, we have Shopify payments in 16 countries and in min and 19 languages. So maybe you haven't heard a lot from the international team, but they've been heads down shipping product. And I think for the, our international partners out there, I just want to say we're listening and um, we're doing a lot. Even simple things like address, um, uh, localization on the checkout form. We've heard about, you know, things like in Sweden or Denmark, you know, like the zip code comes before the country and we've been, the team's been analyzing all the localization of checkout and making sure that it's, it's, um, it's, it's really well done. Frameless apps. Uh, I think this is a, a, a favorite topic for a lot of people. Uh, I've, I've shown some demos on Twitter. Everyone got pretty excited. Uh, all I have to say is we know that the browsers are going to be clamping down on third party cookies um, and we're getting ready. Um, so that apps can have a much richer experience within uh, the Shopify admin, uh, much richer experience in front of the, in, inside of the storefront. Um, if you if you haven't noticed already, Shopify is building more apps than we've ever built. Our Shopify email app app that got shipped out, right? That's built on our APIs. We're using our SDKs, and we're learning a lot. And I think that's moving the bar of um, kind of our app platform really quickly. Um, so. I, I was supposed to demo this at Unite, which we was probably going to be this time. Um, I'll save the demo for another time soon. The team has some really cool things to show you, but just I think the takeaway here is is we're investing a lot in making sure apps have a first class experience within the whole shop experience. Um, performance is big. Uh, those who have shops and big merchants, uh, I think we're, we've been rolling it out to about thirty percent of shops now, uh, which means that uh, the time to first bite is just magically going to get better from every, everyone. So. Last year, we shipped a global CDN and an edge network. This year, we're shipping renderer and online store performances. So we still think and, and want to make sure our online stores are the fastest on the planet. And last but not least, uh, Shopify Fulfillment Network. 
Um, some of your merchants might have, be having, having issues with shipping and fulfillment. Now we're, um, we're in the US now, opening into Canada. We want to bring us global, but if you have merchants in, you know, in need of, of uh, a fulfillment, we're, we're still open and we're, we're still fast. So we'd love to uh, bring them, or, or if you need some help, we'd love to bring them our way. So I'm going to just finish off uh, with a hot topic. And I think if I had a, if I could do a show of hands here, anyone who wants to hear about subscriptions, that virtual show of hands, yeah, I, I think there'd be a lot of people. So uh, let's let's talk about subscriptions, which is a hot topic and something we've talked to you about already. Um, so we've we've gone out to a bunch of partners and a bunch of merchants over the last year, um, I guess since Unite last year, and showed them a bunch of ways that we're approaching this. And um, the partners told us that's kind of cool. You're close, but you're not there yet. Um, so one of the things that we, uh, we learned, I guess, in the last year is our partners and our merchants really forced us and asked us to look deeply into like, like, how do we solve this for the long term? Like what are subscriptions? Like, what do they mean? And what, what do they mean for a merchant? And I think the, the biggest takeaway for us is, is the work we're doing right now is, is in two big buckets, um, that are both related to subscriptions, but also probably more related to Shopify as a whole. Um, and that's Shopify has to have a concept of allowing merchants to sell things in different ways and checkout has to be more extensible. So that's what we're working on right now is, is building in some mechanism of Shopify understanding and whether it's, it's apps telling Shopify, you know, what kind of agreements they want to support or, um, having more extensibility in, in checkout. Um, and that's what the team is working on right now. We have over hundred people working on this within Shopify. Uh, there's probably 10 or so partners that I've personally walked through what we're doing. Um, you know, with it, we're within a month or two, I think, of sharing a lot more about the APIs and what it's going to look like. But I just want to make sure we're, we're thinking about this really deeply. And just to give you an, an idea of what, what selling agreements actually is, and what I mean by that is just think about what, um, you know, if we were to build Shopify from scratch right now, and we said, and you, you were to ask someone, what selling agreements does Shopify have built in? Here's what we have built in. You can pay now. So let's say we're, we have a coffee machine for $100, right? We have uh, one agreement type right now is you can pay now and ship now. We have another agreement type, which is you can auth $100 now, and you can pay $100 when the item is shipped. So if you follow this train of thought, then, then you, you start seeing that what we're trying to build is basically a flexible agreement platform that says, let me just describe how I want to do business. And, and can we track that? And can we make sure the online store checkout and the back office actually uh, adheres to this? So let's look at all the other agreement types that we have. So you can imagine this is a, you want to auth now, you want to um, ship now, but you want to pay in 30 or 90 days. So we call this net 30 net, net um, or net 90. This is an agreement type. Or how about if you want to pay $10 now and you want to pay the remainder when it's shipped, this is a, de a deposit. And the list goes on, you know, you want to have a reoccurring order. Maybe you want to pay all up front and ship one unit later. You want to pay $90 with a discount. You want to pay $320 every month and get four items. So this is the concept of a seller agreement in Shopify is, is our ability to allow apps and allow merchants to define kind of what their contract terms are and to make sure that they're, they're honored. So um, I think we're really excited about what this is going to unlock um, in the ecosystem. Um, for our merchants, and um, if if there's one big takeaway from this is that um, when you when you're in in the Shopify family, like we try and do things for the long term, um, we try and make sure that we we don't just um, uh, you know listen to what merchants need, but listen to what the market needs, and try and, and build for the green path. And that's what we're we're trying to do with not just subscriptions, but making sure we've got some really good primitives in Shopify. So um, with that, I'm actually four minutes over time. I'm looking at Kelly and Mark now, going, okay, JBL, speed it up. Um, so with that, there's a lot more I could have talked about, but uh, uh, scan this QR code um, uh, in this in this physical distancing, but social uh, connection or social closeness that we're going to have. We're going to be a lot more open and try to have a better heartbeat with partners. So um, with that, I'd love to hand it over to our head of puns, uh, Kelly, to talk to us about what it's like to be a partner in these crazy times. So over to you, Kelly. Awesome. I think I need to add head of puns to my Twitter bio. I like that. <laughs> so quick introduction of who I am. Uh, my name is Kelly Vaughn. I'm the founder of The Tap Room. Uh, we're a Shopify Plus agency based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I've been a Shopify partner for going on six years now. So 
whether you're a developer, a designer, a marketer, or you have general experience working in e-commerce as a Shopify partner, you're in a really great position to be helping these business owners make it through what could be one of the most difficult times of their career. So today I'm going to be discussing how we're helping merchants get online through our global initiative, Offline to On. And then I'm going to suggest a myriad of ways that you and your team can help merchants in your own time. So I'm going to start with Offline to On. It all started with a basic offering on my own site. Uh, if you're a small business owner and you need help getting online, I'm going to help you get on Shopify at no cost. Uh, the response I got was uh, completely unexpected. It, I had so many people reaching out and it, there was no possible way that I could do it myself. Uh, thankfully, uh, Karen Baker, the CEO of Shipper HQ, actually reached out to me on Twitter with an even greater idea. Uh, this goal of how can we help as many merchants get online as possible, uh, as quickly as possible. And over the course of one weekend, we recruited over 1,000 e-commerce partners from around the globe, people who work with Shopify, with Big Commerce, Magento, and other e-commerce e platforms who all wanted to help make offline on reality. And it only took us four days to go from idea to having a fully functional website on offline to on.com and begin accepting inquiries from merchants. So over the course of trial and error, we learned that the best way that we could help was by offering specific free packages to avoid any kind of scope creep, one of our favorite things. Uh, so our process kind of flows like this. Uh, merchants will fill out a form and request what it is that they need. And then we have an internal team assigned uh, to a freelancer or an agency who's offering to help in that specific area. Uh, because this is a global effort, uh, we're dividing up the work first by locale. So merchants get matched with somebody who is uh, close to them uh, geographically. And then we do it by request. So we're offering uh, store setups, teardowns, and marketing help. And then lastly, by platform. And this is a large scale effort. Uh, it requires a lot of work to lead and maintain. So if you are interested in helping us run offline to on, uh, definitely reach out to me on the Shopify Partners Slack. So now I'm going to discuss some ways that uh, you can help get merchants uh, get ready, up and running online. Uh, the first one, which we're probably all thinking about, is actually setting up their store. Uh, these are going to be the business owners who have never sold online before. Uh, it's usually a pretty basic store setup just to get them up and running. Uh, the second is going to be integrating services or functionality. Now, this could be maybe an inventory system they need to integrate with, a uh, content management system, or they need help getting curbside pickup set up. Uh, the third is assistance with marketing. So first off, email marketing. Uh, I see a lot of these questions here about uh, getting people set up on an external platform such as Klaviyo, OmniSend, or MailChimp, or using Shopify email since now that's available. Uh, you can also help with Facebook ads. I see a lot of questions about what is a Facebook pixel? Why do I need it? How do I set up my ad audiences? And then you can also help with SEO and Google ads. I'm not going to pretend to understand how Google ads work. However, uh, you can help them uh, do keyword research to find out what it is that they should be focusing on and then help them curate their content both on their blog or their titles and meta descriptions when it comes to SEO. Now, my personal favorite is uh, reviewing their store. I've quickly come to learn that merchants absolutely love teardowns. So this would be a quick run through of their store on uh, screen sharing, just vid like a video chat. And you run through the store from homepage all the way to checkout. And you're just making recommendations along the way. Uh, you know best practices of you know, what they should be focusing on, if anything's kind of under, you don't understand the process. And the really cool thing about teardowns is that it can actually turn into more work for you. Uh, so you can bring in some additional work on your uh, freelance or agency end. Uh, the last one is providing resources. Uh, you may have seen some of the step-by-step -step guides that Katie Sarar from Shopify Plus has been putting together. Uh, really cool things about, you know, adding gift cards to your store now that they're available on the $29 a month plan as well, um, or curbside pickup. Uh, you can create video walkthroughs of parts of the Shopify admin or customizing your Shopify theme. Uh, you can write blog posts or create lists of really useful apps that merchants should be taking a look at. The really cool thing about these resources is that they're evergreen. So they're going to be long lasting and very relevant even past uh, the coronavirus. So I'm gonna close out with uh, just a few more things to keep in mind. Uh, first off, you do need to be reaching out to these merchants yourself. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be coming to you. Uh, they obviously already have a lot on their plate as it is. And make sure you're bringing a solution focused approach to this. So instead of saying, hey, how can I help you? 
say, hey, I can help you get up and running on Shopify. And these are the things that I'm going to be doing for you. Uh, second, balance helping others uh, while taking care of yourself and your team. Uh, maybe consider setting aside like a specific amount of time each week to dedicate towards helping other merchants. Or if you have a team, see if your team is interested in getting involved and you can delegate some of these tasks to them. And lastly, and most important, you do not need to be offering your services for free. Uh, we all have financial needs that we need to be meeting. And while there are some businesses who can't afford a fully fledged project at the moment, there are plenty more who do have at least some sort of budget. Uh, your services and skills are very valuable, uh, so you do not need to be discounting them. I know I ran through a lot in here, uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on the Partner Town Hall channel in the Shopify Partner Slack. And now I'm going to pass things over to Mark Perini, founder of Ice Social, to discuss some of the real life examples of how he's helping merchants get online. Thank you, Kelly. It's good to see you in JML, and it's great to feel a bit more socially close to you too. Um, so as you heard, my name is Mark Perini, and I'm the lead developer and founder of Ice Social. Um, I've been a Shopify partner for nearly eight years. So first off, I'd like to share a little bit about my journey in e-commerce. I started my business right in the middle of the recession in 2009. I know what you're thinking, probably not the best time to start, but I was brash and young. Um, however, the lessons I learned back then are extremely relevant now. So in the end, looking backwards, there was a silver lining, essentially a mix of community, solidarity, and adaptability will bring us out of this just as it did in 2009. It's no secret that e-commerce moves at a lightning pace. We're all entrepreneurs, so I imagine we've all adapted an agile mindset, and that's essential in order to run a business like ours. It's even more vital during a crisis like this. What we've learned thus far, for, um, so, so thus far from COVID-19 is the quicker you can adapt to this new normal, the more successful you'll be. Um, you've got to guide your merchants into being more agile-minded as well. Even if they're a legacy business, they can still take a small business approach. I've got $50 million a year businesses that thought online was simply just a digital catalog and nothing more. Now they're converting their entire business model online for both direct to consumer and wholesale. I realize full well that everything seems really grim, but I can assure you now more than ever, people are buying. The other day, my UPS man said from six feet away, and I quote, it's busier than Christmas. That brought me a lot of hope. Um, speaking of hope, here are two quick examples where we've helped businesses adjust quickly to the times. I've got a client that typically ships out from their own warehouse. They're based in a state where not all non-essential businesses are closed. So he was going to per pause his store and furlough all of his employees on the warehouse side. Instead of that, we split their product lines into five buckets and sent the five warehouse employees home with those products and the packing supplies they need and made five custom fulfillment services linked to those employees' emails. So whenever one of those products sold, that employee would ship it out from home. And there's no apps involved. It's just a native Shopify solution. Um, we also helped another merchant who evolved her baking and catering side hustle into a full-time business. And we're proud to say she's had, an order, she's had orders every single day since she launched. She's engaged her online audience through live tutorials, product naming contests, and live cooking shows with no marketing spend. Moreover, she's been able to keep up with this demand through contactless curbside pickup and glove deliveries. Again, native Shopify solution. The more creative your solutions are now, and the more you can delight merchants during this time, the more trust and loyalty you're going to earn over the, when this is all over. I've still got clients on my roster that I helped through the recession in 2009. As you well know, we're all partners with our clients. And as such, the success of our customers is directly correlated to the success of our businesses. When they grow, we grow with them. If you're helping a merchant through this, now more than ever, it's important to promote that they appeal to consumers' humanity. We're all humans running businesses and trying to live our best lives. In keeping with that, encourage your merchants to tell their brand story from the heart. Putting a face or family to the brand contributes to a sense of solidarity. Encourage your clients to contribute genuinely to the sense of community that's being generated throughout this experience and they'll find success. I realize this can all seem very time consuming and, and we all know that finding creative solutions for merchants is hard work. However, we can all gain inspiration and strength by leaning on one another. 
Try strengthening your idea generation within your developer community via brainstorming sessions or planning sessions. Because in the end, we're all responsible for growing our own communities and we'll all level up by banding together. Now I want to turn it back over to our friend JML to answer all of your questions. Thank you, Mark and Kelly. It's great to hear the, um, the stories. And um, I, I love that story about the, you know, having the fulfillment team uh, fulfill from home, right? That, like this creativity is awesome. I think there's some things that we're doing now that um, might not be temporary as well. I think we're going to find some, some really cool things. People are going to appreciate, you know, what online can bring to their business. People are going to be creative about, you know, how staff can work. So um, thanks for sharing your stories. It means a lot. Um, and I guess it's probably a good time to jump into the questions. So uh, this is the part that's not completely choreographed. Uh, can someone give me a thumbs up when the questions are on the screen? Are we, are we good to go? Yes? OK. So let me just start. Let me just re refresh here. Um, question number one at the top of the list uh, from Carson. Hello, Carson. Thanks for asking the question with 57 votes, so quite popular. Um, Carson asks, themes are more powerful and take longer to build than ever, yet the maximum price has always been $180. Can we talk about price rev share changes for partners? Um, so yes, Carson, uh, I think you know the team knows about this. Uh, I think you know, it should be super frank and candid. I think we've been uh, heads down trying to really build the future of the online store. And um, I think, you know, as part of that, as part of, of shipping sections everywhere, I think we do have to reevaluate both our developer tools around themes um, and also I think about our, our rev, right? I, I, I just talked about a, a subscription model for merchants. Um, it's not crazy to think that, you know, subscription model is something that partners need as well. And I think that's what you're asking um, uh, between the lines here, right, is, is, is how can the investment in time and, and effort kind of, you know, not maybe just have a, a one-time uh, cost because I think, um, you are right on one point, which is themes do have to live on. Um, I think if you're a theme developer and you're building themes for partners, um, you have to continue to make them fast. You know, we're going to ask you, <laughs> Shopify is going to ask you to invest and maintain, and we are investing in infrastructure that it's going to be easier for themes to be updated for, for merchants, right? So you can actually push out uh, theme changes to merchants uh, quicker. Like we need that for our themes for even a security performance. Um, and functionality, and I think that's something as well. So I don't, I, I don't have the great answers, and um, I can't tell you when this is happening or exactly what it is. But we've definitely heard it, um, and it's. Uh, I think we're going to bundle this in with what we're doing around uh, kind of the revamp of the online store. So thanks, Carson. Um, second question uh, from anonymous. I didn't know we had an anonymous option. I guess there is. Hello, Mr. or Madam Anonymous. Um, what is Shopify doing to ensure reviews left within the app store are non-incentivized and by verified merchants? Uh, so this is very topical. Uh, I think over the last month, I've gotten 20 Twitter DMs from partners saying, you know, hey, this app partner is leaving you know, fake reviews or X, Y, Z. Um, I just want to remind everyone, we do have a, uh, a partner support, uh, both chat and uh, form as well on our website. Um, please report these if you find them. Um, we've been very quick. In, in addressing and you know you know and sometimes it's it's you know not founded and sometimes they are we do have to take take these things care, uh, carefully, um, uh, but we all are also uh, arming our apps review team um, with better tools and also um, you might have noticed we're re-reviewing apps more often now. Um, we used to have a, a fairly binary re review process which you review and then you're in and then we don't really look at you ever again and I think that the realities of the frequency of which apps are are kind of being updated. Just from a code perspective, and then um, apps being used differently, we've we're re-reviewing a bit more. So when you do um, um, uh, tell us about some things that you're you're seeing, we we do respond pretty pretty quickly. So um, now I can't give you any like concrete numbers, but like trust me, like uh, I personally talk to the team about about some of these almost almost weekly, and the, the team's taking this really seriously. So please please uh, let us know when you do find them. Um, we've got a, a great partner support team that's uh, willing to take take anything that you uh, you have. Uh, next question from uh, Gil. Are there any plans to make order editing API more robust? It's very limiting. Products added via the API can't have discounts nor line item properties. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we sh like uh, For those who weren't at Unite last year, 
um, order editing was the longest standing feature of Shopify. <laughs> I think it, we, it took us 10 years to build this. And it's not because we didn't want to, it's because uh, it was extremely complicated, um, mostly because we had to take into consideration the impact on partners and apps. Because the minute you order, you edit an order, you know, apps who are listening to, to the order uh, webhooks, like, are, are they listening to edit order properly? What happens to the fulfillment flow, et cetera? So we've, um, uh, we we're pretty careful with this, but we also know that it unlocks a lot of of things for merchants, right? The ability to actually take a a change of color on a on an item without having to create a new order, like it just unlocks a lot. Upselling and be able to just add an item. So um, uh, for discounts and some of the the specific features you asked for, um, I have some good news. Uh, some of these things are actually shipping very soon. Uh, the team is. Um, you know, when we shipped order editing, the team didn't just stop. <laughs> we literally had a, another backlog of, of just making sure that we, we made order editing more powerful, um, that you can do more things um, after the fact. So good news, there, there's, uh, the, the team just let me know yesterday that there's some things coming out pretty quickly. So uh, stay tuned for that. Next question from David. Hello, David. Uh, when do you plan to launch sections everywhere and portable content settings? Not sure how this got affected or delayed because of COVID-19. Uh, so when's it going to launch? <laughs> I hope it's soon. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, uh, we're trying to do a lot with sections everywhere. Um, and maybe I'll just take like a minute or so to explain like what problems we're trying to solve because some of them are not as obvious as others. So the first one obviously is having a great WYSIWYG experience to be able to build sites and use sections on all the properties of your store, right? On product pages, on blogs, et cetera, et cetera. But what's what's also more interesting around sections everywhere is we're building an API for the UI of the online store and, uh, and how you build websites. And what that means is that apps can now give content you know, in specific areas. It means that we can upgrade uh, themes um, more quickly because we'll actually know uh, you know what things go into what spots. You don't have to go into the liquid file and, and put your div in a, an anchor so you can inject your strip, script tag. So, like long term, what we really want with the online store platform is extremely simple for merchants, extremely powerful for apps, and extremely, um, I'd say, up to date for merchants. So that that themes should be like like any feature in the platform that we can, you know, when you update them, you add new features to it. That that merchants get those those theme updates as quickly as possible. And it's it's a combination of all these building blocks that lets us get there. That as a theme developer, as an app developer, you'll be able to update your app, update your themes to merchants. Um, uh, you know, without having to have these long upgrade cycles. So it's it's, a, it's been an extremely complicated uh, uh, problem, mostly because of backwards compatibility. Um, but you've seen we've, we, some of you have touched the beta, given us feedback. Um, I think, you know, uh, it's, 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 I hope it's gonna launch this year. Like it's, it's pretty much gonna launch this year. Um, keep the feedback coming. Um, but we, um, you know, this is the, the biggest step changing online store we've ever made. And we just wanna make sure it actually, can do the things that you've all been asking for. So anyway, I love, you're excited. <laughs> We're excited about it as well. Um, just uh, stay tuned. Uh, next question from Liam uh, Merlin. Are there any plans to launch a partner API to integrate the partner dashboard with third party services? Um, yes, there is. I think it's going to be coming soon. Uh, we've definitely heard loud and clear that partners want uh, an ability to pull some of their metrics about how their apps are doing, their themes are doing. Um, so that you can integrate in, into the, into your own dashboards or your own uh, system. So that's that's going to be something that the GraphQL API is going to allow. Um, so you know, programmatically as, access some of your business data about um, what's sort of the partner area. Um, so we're hoping to go in beta actually in the next uh, few months. So it's actually been being worked on now. So stay tuned. Uh, we know you. Um, the more you invest in Shopify, the more you want to know what's actually working. Yeah, your apps working, they're being installed, where are people uninstalling them and, and, and integrating that into your, your own system. So um, we heard that loud and clear over the last couple of years and it's, it's coming. So great, great question, Liam, thanks. Uh, next question. I'm gonna see if I can find any that I can throw to Kelly and Mark here. Uh, actually, this, this is a good one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you guys on the spot here. So from Anonymous, um, are there challenges merch, is there a challenge merchant experience? Oops, the question just, oh, okay, it's number two now, sorry. <laughs> the questions are, yeah, I think everyone's voting still and on my screen I see, sex, I see questions go up and down. So I'm just gonna keep this one pinned here from Anonymous. 
Are there challenges merchants are experiencing now that we're surprised no partners have tried to solve yet? If so, what is it? Um, Mark and Kelly, what, maybe I'll start with Mark. Um, are there any challenges you've seen you know, being on the front lines with um, what merchants are experiencing that you're surprised um, haven't been solved yet? I, I think that there's a lot of issue around um, the shipping piece. And, and also, I think there's, there's also a piece of like, um, essentially having something and then shipping it later. And like the auth for, for um, Shopify payments is only seven days, right? So if you're pre-ordering something or like post COVID, you want, you know, 30 days it may take to ship something, having the auth last longer, um, you know, is something that people have been looking for. And whether that's through subscription or it's through a payment gateway or that sort of thing, I feel like that's something that a lot of people have tried to solve with pre-order apps and things, but I feel like the auth piece is the piece that's the most pivotal. Um, so a lot of my merchants have had issues with, again, like you buy it now and then, you know, you, you want to have the auth last until you're actually shipping it. And there's ways around it and, and workarounds and that sort of thing. But I think the subscription piece that you were talking about before is something that'll really uh, solve that. But that's definitely something that we've seen. How about yourself, Kelly? I think one of the biggest things that I've seen is uh, having merchants be easily or they're able to easily add in custom fields to their product pages. So we all love and know uh, meta fields, but you do have to use a third party app to do that. So this is maybe not something that the partners need to solve. I think you need to, to throw it back to the Shopify team uh, to to make the custom fields, the meta fields more accessible. Cool. Uh, thanks, Mark and Kelly. I think it, it's funny that you, you just threw, threw stuff back for us to work on uh, <laughs> with an extended auth and uh, uh, you know, custom pro uh, properties and products. But um, maybe just to go back, I'll just, I'll just jam here with Mark. Um, that uh, extending the auth um, for uh, uh, Shopify payments, we're actually working on that uh, with Stripe right now so we can extend it. Um, I, I, you're right that it, it used to be useful for maybe more um, like B2B, or you know wholesale kind of things, but I, I think in this environment, like as you said, right, like with shipping being delayed, um, that's kind of important. So we're we've been working on that. I'm not exactly sure when it's coming, but I know I, I saw some updates from the team and um, Kelly product properties. Uh, yes, high on the merchandising team's <laughs> roadmap, which is um, you know not not only do you want a flexible like seller agreement, but you also um, you want to be able to collect different kind of information during checkout or whether, you know, whether it be on the storefront and we, we, and I think our, the, the way variants let you do that right now is a bit, a bit limiting. So, um, we are on it. There's opportunities for apps there as well. Right. I, I think I've seen some great, I, I saw a sneaker configuration app, I think from some partner in Egypt when I was in Amsterdam a couple months ago, which was kind of really funky, all built with an app. So, um, yeah, there's definitely some gap. Please fill the gaps while we're, uh, while we're trying to get built as well. Um, okay, next question from Joseph Brown. What's the current status of checkout extensions, i.e. recharge going through the native checkout rather than their own? Um, now, I don't have any actual timeline, but as I, as I said earlier, um, this is all integrated into our, what I'd say our subscription work right now, which is uh, modeling out seller agreements as a, as a core concept with the great API and making checkout more extensible. Um, so I, I've seen many prototypes. I've seen some. Uh, I've seen some code running. So all, all I can say is it's extremely, extremely high in our roadmap. Um, I get demos weekly. I'm really excited about where the team's bringing this. Um, we realize that um, you know, as, as Shopify supports uh, more different types of business models, it affects checkout, and and checkout is um, where merchants make money, right? Um, whether it be through upsells through um, having trust, you know, trust metrics that are specific to their vertical that, you know, people expect. So um, I think we're going to, like what we're doing now is a simple, you know, trying to look at like, what's the simplest way that you can extend checkout, um, like from a visual branding perspective from, you know, maybe simple steps. And then the, the more complicated one, which is like seller agreements doesn't have really have to do with checkout as much as if we could just say that, you know, these, these are the types of agreements that are supported, then checkout in the online store will just, they're just going to work because it's data that, you know, we're going to say is, is modeled in, in, in the right way. Right. So, um, uh, really excited. There's a lot of, uh, engineers, designers working on this right now. So, um, I'm not like, I'm not shooting air out of my, <laughs> out of my rear end with this one. Like literally where there, there's a lot of really, uh, interesting and important progress. And, you know, we've talked to Recharge, we've talked to Bold, we've talked to a lot of our partners in this area and they, they know that we're, uh, 
we're, we're taking this really seriously. And we've given, given them some sneak peeks as well. So stay tuned. It's exciting. Well, I'll give you a personal demo at some point when it's, when it's ready. Next question. Uh, Milap Singh, the variant limits. Uh, variant limits in Shopify sometimes prevent merchants to choose this platform. Does Shopify have any plans to increase this limit and improve this feature? Uh, yes and no. I think uh, maybe I'm just going to go back to what Kelly was mentioning. Uh, variant limits are also a bit of a, a symptom of the lack of configurability of products. And um, whereas we've been asked a lot about, hey, I need a lot, a lot of variants. And when we looked at actually what do you really want is they want a lot more flexible configuration. So what the, what the merchandising team is looking at now is, um, you know, how do we actually have um, the ability to configure how your product's merchandised so you can collect more information and maybe not need that many variants, right? So you can say, um, uh, because we think, you know, we introduced variants, what, 15 years ago, and um, it was, it was uh, variants are kind of a way of configuring a product. And I think what we have to do is, is extend that configuration platform and, and our merchandising teams um, looking at that. Um, we're, we're probably more active on the checkout extensions and subscriptions right now, but I, I think the, the configurability of products is extremely high on the list because as part of, of different seller agreements and different business models working on Shopify, part of that is going to be how do they show up in the online store in terms of configuration data um, and how does that affect checkout as well. So it's, it's going to be a fast follow. It's an extremely complex um, challenge. Um, in the meantime, you know, we've seen uh, merchants be creative by you know, having more products versus more variants. So there's definitely ways around this and our, our partner ecosystems fill this gap pretty well as well. So um, stay tuned, but uh, we've definitely heard you and we, we know it's an important part of, of our platform. I'm uh, my, my team's slacking me things as I talk. I'm just, I'm like scanning to make sure I, <laughs> I, I didn't over promise, but I, I think I'm, I'm good. So I'll, I'll keep going. No one's, no one's pulled me off here yet. Um, <laughs> Thank, thank you, Shane, for that. Uh, so Shane, uh, Shane Parmalee, if you haven't met him, he's on our, our app support team. Um, he says it's a really, really hard problem to solve, variant limits. So thank you, Shane. We know uh, I'll relate to that to the team, but I, I think the more important thing is we we like to do hard things and we'll, we'll get it done. So uh, next question from Galen King. I've heard rumors that Metafields might become first class citizens in the native interface. Is there an update on that? Um, uh, yes, they will. Like we think, uh, we think meta fields, uh, are a really important part of the platform. You've probably seen some, some improvements already. You know, we've, we've add, added scoping of meta fields per apps. So if you're building a channel app, um, you know, be able to make sure that you, you, I guess, claim your meta fields. So no one kind of messes around with, with yours. So that that's been shipping. So we've done, we've done a bit of governance around meta fields because, I think you know, the first step we have to do is, is if apps or, or someone's adding meta fields, it's kind of important data if it becomes a first class citizen, um, which means that it has to be protected. We have to have some kind of guidelines around, you know, who, who can write, who can read them, et cetera. So that's actually, you might have not noticed, but that's been rolling out into the platform. Um, uh, and you, listen, you, you, can, you can also, you'll get an update pretty soon. But, you know, something's really interesting about meta fields as well is there's something, again, we, you'll see a theme in what I talk about. There's something we like to do at Shopify, which is like, like peel the onion a couple of layers deeper, which is when someone says meta fields on products, I'm like, well, what are you trying to do? Right. Maybe, maybe meta field is not the answer. It's basically plugging a gap that we have. And I, like my team loves to understand why they're being used. Um, so one, one really concrete example is 83% of all meta fields are on the product are on products. So what does that tell you? Oh, it tells you that we have a, a, a lack of configurability of products. And it goes back to our question from uh, maybe five minutes ago, which is the variant limit, right? So this is, it's all kind of interrelated, which is um, not, it's not just that we want to support meta fields uh, better, which we will, but it's also, we want to look at the insights that are the, the current use of meta fields are bringing in terms of things that we have to add to the platform, you know, in different ways and, and having a, a stronger uh, product variant uh, configuration infrastructure, I think is, is as important as what we're doing with Metafield. So um, yes and yes, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be sharing stuff pretty soon. The team's actually, we've been working on this for a while and you, it's, it's not just a rumor, it's, it's a fact. Uh, next question from Robbie. Uh, Slate is no longer supported. While theme kit is great, but bare bones. 
Is there a more advanced first party toolkit for theme development in the works? Um, there, we actually, most of the team has been really working on the online store these days, right? Getting sections out, looking at the impact, making sure it's rock solid. Um, there, there's nothing I can actually say right now about this outside of, I like we know that we, like longer term, we have to make um, improvements to the theme development workflows, you know, the ability to, um, you know, iterate on themes, update them, um, and, you know, like remove some complexity of actually designing themes as well. Um, it, it, you know, you need some pretty advanced Ninja JS web development skills to create, you know, mobile friendly, responsive, fast, et cetera. Um, uh, it's just, I, I think that's something that we've, we've, we've pushed, uh, probably after that we, we get the section ship. So, um, stay Can tuned. I add something? Kelly. Yes, absolutely. So one of the issues that uh, with Slate was that it was highly opinionated. So you yeah. were very, uh, you had to work within the confines of what was set up with Slate or you had to break it to get outside of it. Uh, I'm going to, I'd like to challenge the developers and freelancers and agencies out there who have created their own build process to share it. Um, mm. Consider it not to be necessarily like proprietary, uh, you know, or just c company property. And instead, I mean, this is the kind of thing that we thrive on as a community. If we can share the type of build process that we're we're using to help with theme development, you're going to help other, you know, it, it's going to pay it back to the merchants worldwide as well. Um, we're actually in the process of the, at the tap room of building our own build process. So I'm going to walk the walk. And as soon as we work out the, you know, the final kinks in our own, I'll share it. That's awesome. Thanks. I think that's a great, a great takeaway, which is our partners probably have a, a million other versions of theme kit, um, up their sleeves, right. As they've, if they've helped a lot of merch with their store. So yeah, it'd be great to show it. Like it'd be great. I'd love my development team to see it as well. I think there's probably a lot we can learn. So, um, great idea, Kelly. Uh, okay. Let's get to the next question from Alex Boazis dash maestro. The response times of Shopify servers are increasing over time. Could we have an explanation for this? Is there a big improvement coming? Um, listen, truthfully, I'm a bit surprised. Uh, we've been uh, maniacally working on performance over the last 18 months or so um, all over the place. Um, I'd say, I, I think report this, I, I'd love to know where it is because we literally have a dashboard of every part of Shopify and it goes red if we ever have a degradation. Now, um, there are some things to look for, which is, and I've talked about this several times, uh, there's, there's some things that Shopify controls about performance of the platform. So obviously, you know, um, you know, the admin experience, the server response times for APIs, um, and we're doing a lot around our CDN network, our, our infrastructure, um, in terms of making sure that it's, you've got all world-class infrastructure. And I know a lot of people have reached out to me saying they've seen their stores get faster and they've seen admin get faster. The customer's page, I think, is 80% faster just this year. Um, but there are some things that we don't control uh, at Shopify, and, and a lot of that just goes back to the online stores. Um, so, you know, we have a dashboard that shows, for example, all of the merchants across Shopify, and there's an extreme variability of performance of online stores. And a lot of that um, doesn't have to do with necessarily how fast Shopify servers are, but also just what the theme does. So I, I, I do urge you, we've released uh, some tooling recently. We have a, a liquid profiler that was released two, two months ago, I think, that helps you... Um, a profile and look for bottlenecks in liquid, which is again, liquids run on our servers, but a lot of that is, is customized by our partners or by, by our merchants. So we've given you some tools to help troubleshoot if there's uh, liquid changes that are slow. I know we've had some great stories of, of people using these tools and, and having huge improvements on their store. Um, and also, you know, we will be launching uh, more visibility tools for just you know, like optimizing theme performance as well. So um, I, I also know for a fact that our, our liquid rendering engine, which I, I talked about over last year, is rolling out. Um, it's, it's multiple times faster than, than the one before. Now, not, not everyone has it on their store, um, but you will get it. So um, maybe the wrap up, like we're obsessing about performance. So if there's something we're not doing well, uh, please let us know about it. But um, we're, we're investing a lot on it. We want Shopify to be the fastest commerce platform in the world. In the world so. Um, I guess the, to, to your question, are big improvements coming? Yes, all the time. Uh, next question from Kieran Masterton. You know what? It'd be, next time we do this, we should. I'd love to know where people are from. We should. There should be a field on this. Where you're, what city? What country you're in? Anyway, maybe for, for next time, maybe. Um, uh, so Kieran's question is: the Bok Operations API is an absolute godsend. Yes, I agree. We've we've heard that a lot. 
Um, do you have any plans to allow for mutations as well as queries? Uh, uh, I think we've thought about it. Um, I think we've we, we've started, I guess, on some of the bulk import cases because I, I think that's one of the ones where um, for people who are setting up new shops was the, the biggest pain point. So the migration case is what the team started to, to deal with because um, you know we, we actually had a lot of partners who were bringing paint shops online to Shopify where they've got huge catalogs and they had to get all that imported. So we, we focused on the import, export, data flow stuff. Um, and I think we're, we're waiting to see kind of how that pans out and we will, um, we've thought about it just, um, I think we're just trying to figure out what the, what the next big wins are. So stay tuned. Um, but it's been, it's been great to see the adoption. Uh, partners have adopted this like wildfire. So uh, keep it going. It makes a, a huge impact to performance. Um, and it is the best way to uh, get large shops if you're a plus uh, partner getting large shops onto Shopify. So um, that's what we built it for. So in our backlog, great question. Th yeah, thanks for uh, uh, giving a kudos to the, the our APIs team. They were they they, they really worked hard to get this out. Uh, next question from Ben: What's the timeline for natively supporting subscriptions in Shopify? Any details on the kind of API access that developers will have for subscriptions? Um, yes, we're working hard on it. Uh, the, the flavor of API is actually pretty simple. Uh, um, it's not gonna, like, what's interesting is there might not be an API called subscriptions, right? It's actually, the API is gonna be something around like seller terms or seller agreements, and you'll be able to configure a product going, hey, this product can be sold in this way, right? Here's what the payment terms are, here's what the, uh, shipping terms are, here's um, what the renewal terms are, et cetera. Uh, we're gonna add Shopify scripts on top of that. So if there's things that are super customizable around pricing, et cetera, that they can be customized. And then um, that's gonna be roughly the flavor of the API. And then from an API perspective, apps are gonna be able to, um, um, when orders come in with, with you know, orders are gonna be bought with uh, terms on them, like the, the agreement's gonna be modeled. Apps can see that and they can action things like, you know, mark a payment, take a down payment, charge the card. So there's a vaulting API that's part of this so that, um, you know, we don't have to put customers through checkout every time that we want to, um, you know, advance the, the agreement that's, that's in place. So um, it's, as I said, a, a huge investment. There's a hundred people working on this. Um, we will be showing you uh, pretty soon. We, we've shown some people already, it just, you know, there's, there's a huge appetite. And when, when we unlock this, uh, I, I know it's going to be used like by a lot of people. So, um, uh, just, just like, maybe just know that we're, we're taking it seriously and, and, and we're thinking about uh, the building blocks you need for this, not just a, a one simple fix. Um, uh, and obviously, uh, checkout extensibility fits into this so that, you know, um, uh, different agreement terms are going to require different kinds of information and different checkout flows. And that that's being built into this as well. So I can't give a, a definite date, but, um, I see demos every week and it's progressing really well. So I'm pretty excited. Um, next question from Anonymous. Uh, is there any plans to revise the App Store reviews? There's tons of fake reviews that flood the App Store and apps can be essentially killed by a few one-star reviews. Um, maybe, may, I might just bring Mark and Kelly back. I'd love to get your feedback on um, apps, App Store reviews. Um, have you seen things you know, getting better, getting worse? Anything you want to tell my team about them? I, I have a first. really great opinion. Absolutely. Um, I recently encountered one of my friends uh, who has a few apps in the app store uh, receive a negative review from somebody who uninstalled the app and then was charged at the end of the month because that's how it works. So if you have the, the building set up and they never actually reached out to so, like the app support team to see if they can get that money back and said they just left a one-star review and there's not really anything that can be done about it except responding to the review yeah, that's a great point i think some of the feedback we got about app reviews is um it's a really important um piece of information for app developers to kind of maintain and maybe either save or or figure out what the, the disagreement is and sometimes that happens that has to happen on the phone <laughs> So I, I think a point well taken. I think um, these are your customers. And I think as part of, again, like whether it be the partner's API, I think we, we do want to make sure you've got you know, better ways of making sure you can, you can, you can talk to them. So um, thanks, thanks, Kelly. Good point. We've got three minutes less left, lightning round. I might just say yes or no to these questions. So let's see how this goes. Um, Mike Rossi, what's the biggest difference you're seeing with Shopify merchants in the past 60 days? Numerous demographic, shopping behavior, conversion rates. Um, 
let's, uh, we're doing our earnings in two weeks. So, uh, Toby and Harley are going to mention some macro things we're seeing. I, I can't say now or I'll, I'll get in trouble, but, um, the obvious things are happening. There's, you know, uh, what we've noticed is the year 2030 has been told to 2020, right? So more e-com restaurants, grocery stores. Um, so those are the changes that, um, that we're seeing now. It's just happening quicker, right? We have grocery stores, phoning Shopify now going, we want to get our catalog online. We want to pick up in store. And, um, so I think that's, that's what we're, you know, if anything, just everything we're doing just been accelerated. Everyone we've been talking to saying, you have to go online. They, they didn't listen. Now they, they're forced to listen. So, um, I think that's, that's a big a difference. We're also seeing, obviously there's some businesses who are, are not doing super well, right? Like not, not everyone is flourishing. People are in, are in, you know, difficult situations and we've made some, you know, adjustments in terms of pausing their store, making sure it's easy maybe to put things on pause and come back later. So. Um, you know, I, I think we're seeing both ends, right? Like, uh, people who are thriving and some people who are having, um, some difficulty as well. And, you know, uh, as an example, that's why getting Shopify uh, capital uh, launched with again, like, like really, really quick response time. We have some merchants like in Canada and the UK, I think within half and 38 minutes, you know, ask for, you know, a small amount of money, thousand, 2000 bucks to either pay for inventory or to help something else. And I think we approved them in 38 minutes and, and they were up and up and running. So I think that's some of the stuff we're doing as well. Just people need some cash now um, just to give them the hump. And uh, you know, some of the banks don't necessarily trust small and medium businesses. They don't have the data and that's something we're stepping up to. And we've really accelerated at our, our roadmap around capital. Uh, the last question. Okay. My, my team's pinging me going, you've got one left. Make it a good one. Okay, no pressure. <laughs> um, uh, do you want me to answer your, Kieran's question? Okay, uh, let, let's go to Kieran's one. Oh, James's. Which one's James? Oh, it's down below. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to just jump to uh, Jamie's question. Uh, and, and maybe I'll have Mark and, and Kelly help me finish this one off. So in light of COVID-19, are there any plans to add more features and functionality for restaurant delivery and pickup services? Uh, Kelly and Mark, maybe like, let us know how many, like how many of your, you know, your, how many restaurants and, and other businesses are you seeing? And have you seen some super creative things happen in the ecosystem around this? I'm seeing a lot of coffee shops because um, I'm based in New York. So there's a lot of coffee shops that are looking either A, to sell beans or B, to sell merch that they have um, at the store. So there's definitely a ton. I mean, I'm talking since this happened, I've had five or six that have reached out. So I think that that's something that's huge. And then obviously restaurants are all doing, um, you know, pick up in store kind of things or curbside delivery. And they're getting eaten on being on, you know, seamless and GitHub yeah, and sorry, GitHub and like uh, Grubhub because they're taking 30%. So if they could do it direct, if they could do it like with Shopify, that would be huge for them um, because their margins are already slim. So losing that 30% at scale, it's great. But, you know, when everything's dialed back, then it's huge to have it in your own court. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you see a lot of uh, like these coffee shop owners doing their own deliveries? Yeah. So I've I've seen you know people that are essentially the the owner. I just went to a coffee shop yesterday, and the owner of the shop was outside selling. They they set up like a like a merch table you'd see at like a band, you know, like at a at a performance, and they were and the the owner was selling the coffee. So I mean, you know, there's a lot there's a lot of that downsizing and you know having them do the deliveries and giving stuff out and all. Cool. I'm seeing a lot of this thing with uh, with curbside pickup and finding opportunities to to optimize that process. I'm also seeing a lot of merchants uh, who are just wanting to sell gift cards right now because they're selling more of an experience that can't really uh, be replicated online or virtually. So thank you for adding gift cards to the uh, $29 a month plan. That was really, really helpful for merchants. Great. So um yeah, thanks, Mark and Kelly. Uh, yeah, we're definitely, you know, we're seeing what we call like neighbor, neighborhood street stores, right? Like neighborhoods getting together, putting their Shopify Richmond Road Street open with gift cards and making sure there's marketing. So it's been, you know, uh, it's, it's been great to see to, to see people kind of like, you know, without us even doing it, just self-serving and, and, and making this happen. So that's great. We, we are looking into some local delivery stuff. 
Um, you know, that was one of the maybe surprises I didn't want to talk about yet because it's still uh, it's maybe a bit of a Hail Mary, but we, we do want to, uh, especially for like, I, you know, you say merchant delivered, local deliveries, right? Where they've got staff or just make it super easy because uh, we do have all the information. We just almost have to print out a map and say, here's where you want to go. So we've, I've seen some demos. Maybe I'll surprise you in a week or so. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. So, um, so maybe that's a, a wrap. We're three minutes over. Um, there's a lot more questions that are at, uh, asked. I might actually just go on Twitter and, and maybe answer a handful at some point today. Um, cause I think there's some, there's some really important ones and I, I do, uh, you know, thank everyone for asking questions and I know there's, there's some, uh, a lot, a lot of votes here. So I'll, I'll do that at some point today. Um, so for the 900 or so that have tuned into this, um, thanks for being part of our inaugural uh, town hall. Um, thanks for, uh, to Kelly and Mark to have uh, made a bit of time out of your busy, your busy schedules to hang out with us and share some of your wisdom. Um, Kelly will come with more puns next time. Uh, a bit disappointed that you didn't drop a couple of bombs. Oh, on called out. I, I was I just waiting. I was just waiting for some puns, but uh, maybe just go follow Kelly on Twitter. It's, it's very I'll deliver on Twitter. Deliver on Twitter next? Okay. You, you need a town hall pun at some point today. All right. I'll, okay. I'll work on that. The thing about puns is that they have to come organically. You can't just think up one. Yeah, I know. I, I know. That's why they never come to me. Uh, and uh, thank for there. There's a, a crew crew of twenty or so people at Shopify who helped all this uh, come together. Uh, we have a broadcast team at home. That's hopefully this looks great for you guys. I, I can't see what what the screen looks like, but hopefully it's going to look great. Um, and uh, give us some feedback. Let us know how it goes. Subscribe to the newsletter, and um, we will see you all next time. Stay safe, and let's uh, let's stay on the front line for our merchants. Thank you.